Welcome to Built to Win, the podcast created to help you level up your business game by developing a success mindset made for the long run. In this episode, Niora's leadership team explores the role of gratitude as a leadership principle. Gratitude is a significant factor in our overall well-being, but research shows that while many people practice it at home, they aren't taking it to work with them. Listen as Jeff Olson, Amber Olson Rourke, and Dave Fleming join in a discussion led by Deborah Heise to look at the role gratitude plays in well-being among workers and how leaders can make it a guiding principle. They'll also share how each of them practices it and tell us what they're most grateful for. I'm so glad to be doing this episode of Built to Win. It is one of my favorite topics. It is not one of the topics that most people think about when they think about a leadership topic, but it's something that's near and dear to my heart. It's something that we talk about all the time on our sister company's podcast, Live Happy Now, and we have published tons of content on it. But I thought with the holiday season coming up, it would be really good if we just spent a little time talking today about gratitude, which um, most people don't realize is something that affects your well-being in a substantial way. In fact, uh, grateful people are more likely to be happy. They're more likely to uh, accomplish their goals. They're more likely to be able to invest time and energy in things that really matter to them. Because gratitude is really a a mental mindset. It's a way that you approach life. It's not just about being grateful. It's about sharing that gratitude with other people. But first of all, it is about being grateful. It's about recognizing where you are, recognizing what you have. And all of us in this world, no matter what our condition is, can think of things that we are grateful for. And sometimes taking that time to center yourself and think, okay, I've got a crisis, I've got to get through this, but I've got so much else positive going on in my life is just the thing that you need to move forward. But today I really wanted to focus on gratitude in, um, you know, really in a leadership role, because I I think that that's an interesting topic that a lot of people haven't talked about. Um, We talk about it a lot in terms of, uh, of, of, of building trust and building teams, which it plays a large role in that, but also it plays an important role in motivating your team. It's, it's kind of a superpower of, in, its, in its own self because when you're grateful and when you express gratitude and you, you share that with your team, it builds trust, it builds motivation, it helps build your sense of well-being, it helps the, build the sense of well-being in your team members. And the reality is it creates that feeling that we can do anything together. Um, it's really important. But one of the things that's really sad, you know, we think about this time of year, we think about gratitude a lot. You know, we go into Thanksgiving. Once one of the things people do, they sit around the table and they say, this is what I'm thankful for. This is uh, something I'm grateful for. And we share that and we share it with our friends and family. But the reality is we don't do that at work. In fact, one study on gratitude found that while about half pe- half of the people in the world regularly say thank you to their family members, Only about 15% of people regularly say thank you at work or in in, in their workplace. The same study found that 35% of people say that their leaders have never thanked them. This is something that is described as the gratitude gap. We may feel gratitude and at home and our friends and our family, we, we know we feel like it's something that we, we need to express and we'd spend time expressing it, but at work, or in our, in, our, in our workplace or with the people that we're working with, for some reason, we don't do that. And I don't know why. Um, because if you think about it, just saying thank you lifts your day, lifts the day of somebody, uh, lifts the day of the person you said thank you to. And it doesn't have to be thank you for big things. It can be thank you for, thank you for making that phone call. Thank you for letting me know. Thank you for filling me in on that. I really appreciate it. And so... It's something that we can really utilize to become more productive and become more successful. And, you know, I want to I want to start by asking Jeff a question because Jeff is somebody who does this exceptionally well. He is really a grateful person and it comes through. You, you, you see him say thank you. You hear him say thank you. You hear him talk about um, how, how wonderful it is that we're doing things. He really is someone who holds up a team and who, who spends time creating – the sense of trust and belonging in that team and a sense of we're all in this together. And I know that you're grateful, Jeff. Um, And everyone around you knows that. 
but what role has gratitude played in your life? And, and how did you come to be such a grateful person that the rest of us always feel that? Well, thank you. I'm being grateful right now. Okay. So uh, thank you for the nice introduction. Um, you know, for me, it's, it's very interesting to uh, think about this subject coming into today's uh, podcast, because I've always looked at this as something that's so obvious. It really is a very obvious thing, but so underused. And, um, and I just don't think people really understand the value of it. And it, I think some of that has to do with it doesn't cost you anything. <laughs> it, it's it, from a return on an investment. You couldn't have something that can have more impact with little investment other than time. Okay. And uh, I always, I've always had a saying in my life that I, I look for things that are not only the right thing to do, but are also the smart thing to do. So, you know, being grateful and, and sharing you know, thanks and gratitude to people, it, that's just the right thing to do. It's also the very smart thing to do because what you just spoke to uh, Devin, you know, I've, I've always been a, a person who believes you hear me say the word synergy all the time. Synergy is where a group of people go somewhere together. They would never go to by themselves. And a big part of that is a team that feels good about themselves. Okay. And so, Anybody in a leadership position, but it doesn't have to be a leadership position. Anybody who's a part of a group, to understand recognition is a motivator. I mean, and, it, and it's something if you, I mean, it's something we do with our children naturally. Um, I mean, you, you know, one thing you want to do is give your children a lot of gratitude, a lot of yeses, because what you want to create, the greatest gift you give a child is self-esteem. Well, why does that end when a person goes to work? Okay. Uh, it's because you want a, a group of people that are highly motivated, feel appreciated and it's sad to see that that really doesn't happen that often. And so, you know, when you think about it, I heard this a long time ago about by the time you're five years old, you've heard the word no 40,000 times. And that's why we basically have a stronger negative subconscious than we have a strong, than our positive subconscious. And, and you know, look at psychology. Psychology didn't even have positive psychology until 1998. It was, it was always wrapped around, you know, negativity. And still, you know, 16 out of 17 books written on psychology are, on the negative side. So, you know, positive is a new thing. And from the standpoint of science, that's something we, we've been unearthing and live happy and sharing those words. But, you know, what I know one thing I did with Amber and Renee did with Amber is, is you can't change the nose. You have to say no. Don't go in the road. Don't touch that fire. <laughs> I mean, the nose, you're building boundaries with nose. Okay. So what you do is you find reasons to say yeses and you just give them a lot of yeses. That's, that's, you know, that's being grateful. That's giving them a positive mindset. So, you know, we here at uh, New York and, and Live Happy, and we really believe in, in, in uh, personal development. We believe in positive psychology. And so for me, that's where it's come from. When I, as I started to recognize the real secret weapon business was the ability to motivate people. And I, and I started embracing myself into personal development, you know, where, where and, and it all starts with you. That, you know, I always say if you had six hours to chop down a tree, you would spend four hours sharpening your ax, the other two hours chopping the tree. Well, part of sharpening your axe it starts with you having your own gratitude for yourself. And, and I think it's a big thing. And, and that's something I had to learn. Okay. I didn't understand going into it. And I, and, and that took me to realize and the more I could be grateful to other people and, 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 and you got, you're not doing it because uh, from the standpoint of I'm, I'm doing this like an investment, you're, you, although it was an investment that you're doing it because that's who you are. I mean, I, I say, thank you to people for everything. I don't, I don't think I ever end an email without saying thank you. And, uh, and it's just, it becomes a part of you, but it really becomes, like you said, it's a superpower. It's a huge superpower. And when you start focusing on that, it's, it's amazing because, you know, you kind of attract who you are. And so if you're a person who's not grateful, guess what you're going to attract? Ungrateful people. If you make gratitude a part of your life, you know, that's something you expect out of yourself and you, and, and you, and you kind of speak into existence and you inspect. What I mean by that, you just start creating the environment for it then it grows and it just grows naturally. And again, it grows by intent and it grows by, you know, your, your actions. And it's not something you have to go and borrow money from a bank to do. Okay. But, and it can have a significant return on investment. So for me, because of personal development, and as you all know, we all move towards live happy as a part of that. And the positive psychology, it just became more and more of who I am. Deb. I just, I started realizing more how important it is. And, you know, I know for myself when, when uh, somebody or one of our brand partners or somebody in life, sends me something to thank you and it's just in a text what it does for me because i know they took their time found my name typed those words in and said thank you it means a lot to me it inspires me it gets me to want to do more than what i've done before where i was at before i read the text okay just that simple thing coming from a person doesn't realize what it can do to a person and they're looking up to me 
like, you know, they're thanking me for something. What they don't understand is they're empowering me. You know, they're like, they're like charging my batteries. So it works both ways. And so uh, I just found it to be a, an incredible tool, but it's a tool that it's, it, when you, it starts with you when you, when you do it, you just start feeling better about things. And that's what, what's happened for me. Okay. And, and, it, and it just kind of continues its way along. And, and if you look at our company, you look at everybody on this podcast, this is a group that says, thank you. You know, this is a group that is grateful. This is a group that takes care of each other. And uh, that doesn't happen by accident. That happens by purpose. Okay. And when you make hap- when you make gratitude a part, one of your purposes, one of your meanings in life, it becomes really a great guiding light for how things happen for you. And it, and it not only affects your business, it's going to affect your children. It's going to affect your friendships. It's going to affect your relationships. And it, it's, it's something that can go into every aspect of your life. So it's a, it's a very, very easy thing to do. It's a very, very inexpensive thing to do. It's a very impactful thing to do. And it's totally neglected by so many people. So by doing this, you kind of give yourself an unfair advantage because you're, you know, you're, you're doing something that the masses aren't doing. And it's easy for you to do, and it has a huge impact. So it's, it is, like you said, the superpower secret weapon. And I, I think it's interesting that when you talk about gratitude to people, and and you th- people think about, oh, if I express gratitude to somebody, they're going to feel better. But the reality is, studies show us that you feel better than the person you said thank you to, just by taking the time to say thank you. In fact, uh, expressing gratitude and being a grateful person you know, gives you gives you a higher self esteem, less depression, less anxiety, better sleep. In fact, uh, there's a study that even shows that people that are grateful are 20 percent happier, and we happier they have a better sense of personal well being than those who aren't grat- aren't grateful. So it's not just about being grateful or having other people be grateful for you. It's about sharing that between you and really taking time to reflect on it. And it can have a significant impact on your life. In our business, we're kind of uh, we're kind of in one of those unique businesses where recognition plays a huge role in our business. People are just getting started. They may be a first time business owner. They may be the first time they've taken any effort in this in this arena. And you know that recognition is something we hear all the time about being really powerful. One of the big things we do in our business is we invest a lot of energy into recognizing other people for their small successes because it's something that makes, you know, we have a lot of people who are first-time business people, people who've never done anything like this before, people who've never even really had the opportunity to to make their own living before or to, to make a little money before or people who really, this may be the first experience they ever have um, being out on their own, doing something and trying to create success in their own life. And it's so important. And I'd like to, I'd like to ask Amber, you know, why do we do what we do? And, and give me an example of sometimes of of something that you've seen where gratitude and recognition has really made a difference in a person. Cause we have so many stories here. I just love for you to share a, a little bit about that. Yeah, I think that, you know, when you think about, you know, people's day to day lives, whether they're being a mom or whether they're working another job or whether they're doing things, there are a lot of times where you're doing something and you're spending your energy and there's no one applauding you, right? You're just expected to do these things. And so uh, that little bit of recognition and uh, celebration really goes a long way because there's not a lot of places that you get that. And so I think as a leader, creating a culture of gratitude always starts with you and you putting the emphasis on that. And when you're leading people, right? I think a lot of times managers, and you're looking at it from a traditional management standpoint, you're really programmed to look for what went wrong. And there's a reason for that, right? Because as somebody leading other people, you're trying to see what went wrong so that you can course correct that so you can mentor them. Then that is a big part of mentorship. But what people aren't taught as much as they should be is to also have systems and spaces and intentionality to look for what went right. Because when you praise what you want to happen, that duplicates. So, you know, I've always, you know, was taught that philosophy from very early on is praise what you want to duplicate. So if you want, you know, a team of people that does a certain activity or has a certain attitude, if you consistently praise that and and show gratitude for that and recognize that, you're going to duplicate that behavior in other people. So one of the most effective 
things you can do from a, uh, a, a an organizational standpoint if you're trying to lead a program is to make it um, things that are attainable and things that are um, that people know, right? It's like predictable. That was the word I'm looking for. Predictable. So, you know, we have you know little little kind of gates where people can have a small goal, achieve it. They know what the thing is that they need to achieve to earn the recognition. And so it's, everybody knows it, it's predictable, it's consistent, and they know in which way they're going to get um, that reward and that recognition and that shout out and that kudos. And so having those things, it's always great, I think, to just do the off the cuff gratitudes for sure. You want to do that, but you don't really want to leave it to chance if you're leading people, right? You want to create very specific things, whether it's, you know, for example, at the end of the month, every end of the month, uh, I go on our Facebook group that has everybody in it. And I do a brag board, a virtual brag board. And I ask everybody to share something that either they did that they're proud of, um, or something they saw a team member do that they're proud of. And, you know, that's one way to create a very, it's a, it's predictable, right? It's at the very last day of every month. People know what's going to happen. Um, that's just a small example, but again, you can do, you can be creative and kind of make it your own and create those wins for people. One of the other uh, quotes that kind of stuck with me that somebody said is you don't learn to be a winner by losing. You learn to be a winner by small wins, right? You string together small wins and that encourages you to step into that winning power. And so if all you're ever hearing is what you did wrong, what went wrong, what could have been better, right? You aren't learning to be that winner kind of mentality when this whole podcast is around built to win, right? So part of being built to win is learning to be in that winner mindset, which is being a part of an ecosystem that you know what the win looks like, like that's defined, like this is a win, it's defined, you achieve it and you know what kind of recognition and, you know, kudos that you're going to get. So those are kind of the mantras that I always think about is praise what you want to duplicate and help people learn to win by winning. I love that. That's how you get, uh, that's how you get gratitude into your organization as a leader. You, you set it up as a system. I love I love that you brought out, yes, those nice little off the cuff things are, are are there and they're important, but actually having a structure whereby it's built in, it's built into the system, it's built into the company, it's built into the business activity. Um, I think that's phenomenal. Uh, I think that that really makes a difference for people because they, they feel like they're winning um, and, and they are winning a little bit at a time, but it, it's great. I love that. Um, Dave, so... Gratitude is something that I know has uh, changed a lot of our lives. Um, for me, it really was recognizing, you know, I, I was one of those people that was always head down, go forward, go forward, go forward, go forward. And even though I was thankful and grateful, I didn't always stop and say it. It's kind of like, well, of course they know that they did a good job. Well, no, they didn't. Right. And so you learn that as a young leader. Fortunately for me, that was a long time ago. But I'd love to ask you, um, how has gratitude changed your work life or how has it impacted your work life? Yeah, great question. And I, and I love what I love what Amber said is, you know, about um, re- reinforcing the things that that people are doing well and and recognizing what uh, you know when when a job is well done to call that out because I can look back over my own career. And I can see instances where somebody, a mentor, a manager, or somebody, somebody called out a good job, or they said, you know, well done on on something, and it made me want to do better. It made me want to do more of the same thing. And you know, I think the the same principle is 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 true in the workplace, at home, as a parent, or whatever you know, wherever we happen to be. That that doesn't change, right? Like like saying thank you and being grateful for a job well done. That's that's something that 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 kind of transcends any environment that we'll that we'll find ourselves in but especially as leaders and i think that it's really easy sometimes to forget that a good job often goes unnoticed because that's your job right a lot of times you're like no well like you said dev it's like that you're supposed to do that because that's what they pay me to do so um so i think taking that extra moment and like really calling it out one of the things that i love that we do at neora is you know every Monday we have we have shout outs we have we have call outs for people who did something really well some people that that did a good job and and um 
you know, and, and we recognize them in front of the whole, in front of the whole company. Cause I think, I think those statistics that you mentioned at the beginning of this call, those are so, so critical, especially now it feels like, it, it feels like it's, it's easy to overlook a, a job well done in, in this, in this economy, in this year, in this, like that people just kind of expect you to do a good job. And, um, and when people are reinforced, it's, it's one of the, it's one of the primary motivators that people have right? It's, it's, you know, there's money, there's, there's lifestyle and there's recognition. And I think recognition is, is most frequently the one that gets left behind because it's, it's not something that we automatically think of, but it is absolutely critical for a, a pretty good size portion of the population. Like they will move when you motivate them, when you encourage them to do something because you said thank you, or because you were gra- grateful for, for what they did. So it's, you know, for for me, I've seen it personally in my career, and I and I've seen it with my colleagues. I've seen it, and I and I see it here. I continue to see it here, and that's part of why I love what we do. Well, that's one of the reasons I wanted to uh, wanted this to be one of the topics of the podcast. Um, first of all, it's something that I believe wholeheartedly makes a difference in life, uh, both for you personally and for the people that you're leading, or that or that are just team members or just around you. One of the great things about that call that uh, Dave was talking about, where we do shout outs, those are peer to peer shout outs. Those are not. Um, leaders recognizing that somebody did a good job. It's it's other people recognizing that someone else on their team or, or usually more often on somebody else's team has done a great job. And it's an important part of people feeling appreciated. Nobody wants to go to work um, and you, nobody wants to be part of a team. Nobody wants to be part of a, any sort of enterprise where they feel invisible or unvalued. Um, so having gratitude as really you know a core part of our culture has been really important uh, for the company's success, but also for the success of the individual people within the company. I, I think it's huge. Um, I want to come back to Jeff. Jeff, you know, Dave mentioned something, which was, uh, you know, the experience of mentors expressing gratitude. You, you're a mentor to millions, um, and you've been a mentor to millions uh, throughout your life, which has been it's really phenomenal to be to be as close to you as as we have the privilege of being and and to, to to be mentored personally by you. But what what does gratitude for you look like in action? What does it look like for you to be leading a team um, with gratitude versus leading a team where people are just doing what they're supposed to be doing? For me, you know, the gratitude is a, is like a foundational thing for build in an environment that's in, an inclusive and build an environment that's, you know, inspires people to work, you know, uh, for, for us, we, we really take that very, very seriously. Um, you know, for example, you know, at Neora, you know, this is, I'm going to give an example of an actual item, uh, it, it, you know, and, and Dave just spoke to, we, we do the, uh, you know, shout outs, which you do every Monday. We had, we did rock stars this morning where we nominate certain rock stars for their activities. And we recognize people's birthdays. And we recognize people's anniversaries and those type of things. Let's them know that we care, that we're watching them, okay? It's just, you know, it's kind of part of how we do things. But on a bigger scale, you know, every March, there's an International Day of Happiness. And uh, and that's when the, the, the world is supposed to celebrate happiness. And what we started as a company is building walls all around the world to um, share your, your gratitude. We call them gratitude walls. You know, they're orange walls and people, we have the stickers and people come up there and write down what their gratitude is. Because one thing we know from science is you take an, actually a grumpy old person and if they write, write down three gratitudes, three things they're grateful for every day for 21 days, it will change the neurons in their brain. It'll change the pathways in their brain and they can go from being a grumpy person to a positive person. So it's something that's, you know, it's very doable. So, you know, for, for me, you know, we, we try and make it part of our, our culture more than anything else. I think our culture is your DNA, your company, it attracts who you are and repels you or not. And I, I would just say this, a, a company that's full of people who are grateful and who do share, share their gratefulness is going to have be a much more inspired company and, and be a company that's going to be more attractive than when it's not. Okay. And so, um, it, it, again, I'll go right back to what I said earlier. It starts with you. And, uh, you know, I know for me, I, I, I didn't really grow up with a lot of, of, of gratitude <laughs> coming my way, but I sure was affected by them when I got them. Okay. When, and when people came out and, and said something, it, I, I, I always remember it had a lasting impact on me. And I think that's why I like to do it because I, I understand the power of it. Um, and, you know, and I go back to the child, you know, what, what do we do with children? Children, we're trying to give them self-esteem. Why would we not give our, our employees self-esteem? Uh, and it's a simple thing to do. And so, 
you know, again, for me, what we, we try to do is act it out and the things we do. If you look at our, you know, our company, we have built around three words, make people better. Um, what better way to make people better than sharing gratitude towards them? You know, your gratefulness, because that inspires people. You know, we, we want to be a company that's about the whole person, not just about our products, not just about our business opportunity, about the person they're becoming along the way. And like, one of the foundational tools you have is gratitude. So, you know, from my standpoint, I've just kind of woven it in and everything I've done. That's why I got into personal development. That's why we did Live Happy. That's why I actually I wrote the book. In my book, I have a chapter about uh, reflection and celebration. And, and where you need, you reflect on your life and then you celebrate that and because and, that empowers you to go forward. And, you know, it, and what, what people need to understand is I know what's done for me. There's you're going to run up against a lot of things that, that, that aren't good. OK, things that are gonna be frustrating or your, your, your challenges, and that type of thing. And it's easy to go down the path of woe is me, pity me or that type of thing. But the reality is, like you said earlier, Deb, if you just take inventory, you know, you, you've got to understand you cannot have happiness without sadness because you can't, you, you gotta have, you gotta experience one to know the other one. You know, there's a saying, you gotta, you gotta become here or not to find out who you are. So when things happen to you, whether it's sadness or, you know, or, you know, just things you can't have up without down, you can't have love without hate. So when, when you experience those things that you're afraid of, the truth is you're experiencing them so you can be more grateful for the other side. Okay. So instead of, you know, I, I see, when negative things happen to me, I see them as, as a learning curve. I see them as an inspiration. So that'll be more appreciative to the other side because you can't have the other side without the other side. It's, it's just a law of physics. You know, there's for every positive energy, there's gotta be a negative energy equal to it. Okay. And so um, it, it, it's, it becomes an outlook. And when you start using that as an outlook, then, then the downs, downs don't take you down as far and the ups take you up higher. Okay. And again, it's a simple thing to do. You don't have to, you don't have to spend a lot on it. So, you know, when you do that, it, it, not only you think about your company, we've, we've had, we've had some serious things that we've gone up against as a company that we've had to take on. And I think one of the best things we did is we, we kept a positive attitude for the whole thing. And one thing I was always for is I was always, you know, I was always, always looking for the things that I was grateful for because I was being reminded every day of the things I wasn't happy with. Okay. And, uh, and, and, and if you as a leader, if you go down that path, uh, then you you're not really being a good leader to the people around you. I mean, that's it, you're now you know they all of a sudden start um, you know looking for the negative things. And so what you want to sh share with people as a leader that you are a person that is focused on the negative things. You're not naive to the to the uh, to looking for the positive things, but you're not naive about the negative things. But you use them as a learning experience, a growing experience because they're not going to go away. Okay. Gratitude is a part of that, okay? And I, I think people who are grateful have a tendency to deal with negativities way better than people aren't, okay? Uh, and, and to a certain degree, they're not connected, but they are very connected because it's, it's an outlook thing. It's a, it's a mindset thing. And gratitude is your, your demonstration of that you're, being, you're, you're, you're focused on your own personal mindset, okay? Because it starts with you. But in turn, you're, you're, you're turning around and you're sharing with other people. And that's where the great gift comes from. You know, as you said earlier, Deb, you know, when, you're, when you are grateful to somebody, it makes you feel good for doing the activity. It's been proven over and over. You, know, you, by, you know, Focus on what you're grateful for that you will grow as a person. So, you know, again, I, I, I'm proud of what we've done. I, I, I've, always, I've always liked how every time we have a challenge, uh, we never quit working on going forward. We never, we never quit building what we're doing because we're grateful for where we're at, okay? Knowing that those challenges will come. So it's, it's just really become a part of our, our for me, my mindset. And, uh, and, and, and again, I'll go right back to where I started out with. It's, probably, it's the right thing to do. It's the smart thing to do. It's an easy thing to do. It's inexpensive and it's so overlooked. So it is a superpower. It's available for everybody. So I think we all agree that Gratitude is something that we want to have around. We want to be part of our culture. We want to, we we want in our lives. You know, I there's so much research on the personal benefits of being a grateful person. There's a lot of research on the team benefits of having of showing gratitude within teams. You know, just the trust factor, and you can do more together, and you're not as scared of failure. There's tons of research on that. But I think you know, if I'm if I'm a leader, or if I'm developing as a leader, what I really want to know is 
how do I start? How do I how do I build gratitude in my team? What does that look like? I think Amber gave us some good tips earlier about making sure you've got benchmarks where you can recognize people and you can say thank thank you. But what are what are some other things? Uh, Dave, I'm going to pick on you for a sec. What are some other things you can do to start creating that culture of gratitude within your team? Well, I, I, that's a great question, and I think that the first thing, in my opinion, first thing you've got to do is you you have to you have to walk the talk, like you have to start paying attention and taking notes and and recognizing what you are grateful for personally, because it, it's really hard to be grateful for. It's really hard to say thank you to other people when you're when you're when you're not in that mindset yourself, and so that's the first thing is is find a way where you can take noticed like what are what are you doing what am i doing on a daily basis it's helping me stay in that mindset of gratitude and it might be a journal it might be you know meditation a couple you know spending a few minutes every day well, however you do it but but i think that's the first thing is just understanding that i have to be the leader in this instance as well in the instance of being a grateful person and then after that it's it's finding ways and this is one thing that and this is a challenge that I that I love as you know as as, as my career has advanced and in finding the ways that people enjoy being recognized and then and then recognize them in those ways you know some people like public recognition some people love being recognized in front of their peers some people don't and so it's it's kind of a fun, it's, it's a fun thing to to learn how people in your organization like to be recognized because it makes it that much more impressive and meaningful when you recognize people the way they want to be recognized. So for the person who wants to be recognized in front of their peers, do that. You know, put a put a put their picture on the elevator and and with their you know this this the and we do that as well. But like you know, what's the the big award of the month? Um, if they don't, if they, if that's if that's uncomfortable for people, then you know let them you know do it in do it in private because then then they'll they'll know that 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 is meaningful for them, and uh, and that's a fun thing to do. But but I but 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 then you've got to be sincere, and that and that's really the last piece. Is no matter what you do, and no matter what you are, no matter what you're you're doing, like you have to do it sincerely because people people know like if you're not if you're not sincere about it they they know they can feel it but but it, it's so cool when you do it and people recognize that you really care and and it just comes off so really like just so meaningful for people it's awesome so i agree wholeheartedly uh recognizing people the way they want to be recognized is is a key center for gratitude working because if, if you want to pull up somebody who is terrified of speaking and have them stand in front of a room of people and be recognized. Um, I've got a child like this. It's not, it's not really a positive experience for them and there's some recovery. So, you know, and then learning to create that personal attention, uh, finding out what that person, how that person wants to be recognized really shows that you as a leader have respect for that person. I think that's really specific. And I agree with you, you can't fake it. So, you know, coupling that with Amber's being specific, you know, creating specific moments for recognition so it becomes part of the culture. Um, I, I just think that those are good tips people can take to start building gratitude into their teams. And and you'll find that if you have a team that's very grateful, that you don't, you, you end up approaching problem solving in a different way. It's not contentious. It's not competitive. It truly is. How can we come together to make the best decision? How do we come together to, to produce the best results? And that's one of my favorite things about working on a team is being able to work together in a positive way to overcome any challenges that come your way. Because no matter who you are, there will be challenges. Um, Amber, I'm, I want to start with you because this is a, kind of a holiday podcast. It's the first time we've 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 done one over the holidays. Um, what in your life or in work? Um, what what drives you? What are you most grateful for right now? Or what? Or doesn't have to be the most thing. What is something that you are grateful for that you're really paying attention to right now? That's a tough one. Uh, there's so many. There's so many things. Um, you know, I think that at the end of the day, the things that are always at the top of my list are always people because I think your life, the people that you spend the most time in your life with are the people that, you know, that really define that experience. So 
Um, I'm really thankful for just the quality of the people that I am surrounded with on a day basis, whether it's my, you know, my family and my home unit, my extended family, the coworkers, the executive team, the brand partners that I work with. And I think back to times in my career where I was not as, you know, you know, not as happy or as fulfilled, I would say. And a lot of times it was because I was around people that just drained me or didn't have the same outlook as I did, didn't see life the same way. And that literally can be such a, uh, a a draining force in your day-to-day experience. And so I just am really grateful for the people that I get to interact with in every area of my life. And, um, you know, when I'm like planning for the next year, as we're kind of getting into that season of thinking about the next year, one of the things that I'm most intentional about planning is my time with those people, like making sure I have enough quality time with all of those different buckets, you know, there's your personal relationships, friendships, um, your, your team that you work with and that, um, you keep those because, you know, investing in relationships and keeping those great people um, close to you is just going to continue what we've talked about here today. You're, you, you spend that time cultivating those relationships. You spend that time expressing your gratitude. You spend that time making them feel seen as we've talked about. And you don't want to just you know then plant, cultivate that, and then get busy and walk away from that. And then, you know, that relationship ends up not being as close or dries up in a way. And so having that intentionality for continuing to invest in those relationships is a real focus of mine and what I'm grateful for. Well, I'm, I'm going to jump in here um, and share what I'm most grateful for um, in the workplace right now is really our trust because it creates synergy. We all have different gifts. I mean, God gave all of us different gifts. We're all very good at different things. Um, and we can focus on our strengths in this in our environment, and we can all be successful by trusting the other person to focus on their strengths and do what their part is. And I've really never been in an environment where there's less internal competition and more internal support than the uh, workplace that we have right now. So I'm incredibly gratitude. I mean, I'm incredibly grateful for being able to work in an environment where I feel like people trust me to do my part and I trust them to do their part. And then we come together on a regular basis and lift each other up while we're solving problems. It just really makes it a a joy to uh, be surrounded by the team. And of course, I am tremendously grateful for my family and tremendously grateful for being able to, uh, you know, invest in what I believe in, which is personal development and that people can be uh, more successful through the actions that they take. It's a really important part of uh, my personal identity is that I believe people can help themselves be better and to work in an environment where everybody believes that, or at least the vast majority believe that is is just a, a benefit to me. Um, Dave, same question. What are, uh, what are you, what are you most grateful for? What stands out for you that you're grateful for right now? Oh, you know, right. There's so many things to be grateful for, and and it's it's hard to nail it, nail, nail, nail down. But but I think you start with the basics. You know, the things that the things that are the things that you think about when you go to bed at night, the things that you uh, that you think about uh, in the morning as you get up, and, and the first thing would be your family, uh, the people that you get to spend the most time with, people that you interact with. Um, you know, inside the the walls of your own home, that's that's number one. But um, but. Beyond that, I think you know to be to be in a you know in an environment like you mentioned, a professional environment that is that is really encouraging growth and uh, you know personal growth and and professional growth and and always expecting that we're going to be better than we were yesterday. I think that's always a, a great thing. Mm-hmm. And then and then also just you know being being alive in this in this time like this is such a this is such a remarkable and cool time to be alive. You know, there's so many great things happening around the world. There's, you know, there's this innovations and and there's great things and yeah, there are bad things and there's always going to be bad things, but you know, you can, you can make a list and I would challenge everybody to make a list of why it's so exciting to be alive right now, because you know, there were, we're not going to see a time like this again. You know, things will things will continue to evolve and things will continue to innovate. And it's and it's important to just take a second and and appreciate where we are. And yeah, and for me, that's my list. It's like, 
like my family, uh, an opportunity to work in a professional environment that, that focuses on getting better and, and being the best possible version of myself. Uh, and then, and then really like contributing to this wonderful environment that we get to live in called life and just, and just being there and seeing all this come together. It's just, it's a remarkable time. I love that. Um, I love that. And I echo every bit of it. That, that is, that's a phenomenal way to put that. Um, Jeff, uh, we're going to end with you. Um, what are you most grateful for right now, this time of year in your life? Well, yeah, when I think about what I'm grateful for, it, 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 it's funny. It's always going to be around people. It's never going to be around, uh, uh, you know, physical things. It's going to be people. And it's funny, the things that the people are most, things I'm most grateful for and people are the people I'm the most proud of. And they kind of seem to go together. And because of that, they inspire me to not me not to let them down. So, you know, I get I get that reward of because I'm so proud of them. And I'm so grateful for them. So it really starts with family. I'm super grateful for for Amber and Renee and her family and you know my family. And, uh, you know, Renee and Amber were at a spa last week together. And I don't think they were as happy as I was happy that they're together. You know, it made me proud that they're there, maybe happy they're there. So it, it really uh, my my gratefulness is about people. It starts with family. For, it, for me, it's first, second, third is by far. But what I love is, you know, although at Neora, we're not a family. We call ourselves a Neora family. We, we treat each other. We try and treat each other like family as much as possible. OK. And so I'm really grateful we built a company that that, you know, embraces how, how I want to live my life, which is treat people with respect, you know, and have character, have purpose, have meaning, you know. Uh, and, and we've done that. And so I'm, I'm just very, very grateful for the, the people around me, the, the ones that I'm the most proud of and the ones that inspire me to be more of who I am. And I'm really grateful to be part of a company that seems to be doing that for other people. I mean, I really do believe our company makes people better. I'm, I, I really believe that, not just the products, not the opportunity, but I believe a person associates with us will become a better person, a better spouse, a better parent, you know, a better friend, a better coworker. And, and I'm proud of that. That's something I'm very, very proud of. So because of that, I'm very, very grateful for and, and it, you know, that just, that just didn't happen because we said three words. It happened because we, 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 you know, we, we spoke into existence. We, you know, we build a company and the company reflects, you know, who you are. That's something we're very proud of. OK, and that's something that will really inspire you. And in doing so, that's something you'll never let down. You know, so they all kind of go together. So I'm very, very grateful. And, you know, but again, it, 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 for me, it begins and ends in the holidays with your family. There's there's nothing um, more important and more grateful for me. Well, thank you, everybody. I could talk about gratitude for hours, uh, but thank you guys for uh, getting together and indulging me in my favorite topic. And I look forward to our next episodes of Built to Win. I think it's been a phenomenal year. I'm really grateful for everything that we've put into this. I think that uh, all of the episodes are worth uh, worth listening to. If you're a new listener and you haven't listened to anything else, go back. Um go back and listen to some of the earlier episodes. There's something in there for everybody. And it's, it's such a joy to be able to be, to work with such a fantastic team. And I thank you guys and have a great holiday. That was Deborah Heise discussing gratitude with Jeff Olson, Amber Olson Rourke, and Dave Fleming. We hope you've enjoyed this episode. And if you learned something from it, please share it with a friend or colleague who you think would also benefit. And if you're new to Built to Win, we invite you to go back and listen to our story from the beginning. You can find us wherever you download your favorite podcasts. And while you're there, please rate us and leave a review to let us know what you think of the show.